What's up, nerds? We're your hosts. I am Chad. And I am Jake. This is our weekly podcast where we explore the world of nerd from TV, movies, games, comics, news, and books. We will give you our opinions, theories, and oftentimes spoilers. We will also have friends and experts as guests on the show to elaborate further on those topics. But be prepared. We like to have a few drinks, so buckle up. If you want to support our show, like, share, and subscribe wherever you enjoy your podcasts. You can also become a premium subscriber over at buymeacoffee.com slash allthingsnerd. So let's get into it. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast. Nerd. Welcome, nerds, to the All Things Nerd Podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Jake, I hope that you had a good week. With that, let's jump right into our first topic. But first, cheers. Mm, yum. <laughs> all right. We are going to talk about Invincible, the se- season two finale. Uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, obviously check out, check back in with us. Uh, we want to hear what you have to think about it. But we're going to tell you what we thought about it. So that's enough time if you're still here and you haven't seen it. It's your own fault. Um, <clears throat> so fucking hell, dude. Uh, it's bloody. It's fun. There is some mul- multiversal uh, elements to it. Heavy uh, multiversal elements to it. And we will what? break those down. Um but yeah, I mean, god damn it. I'm I'm really upset that that this is season finale already. I think it went by so fast. Even though they made they, us wait like It's because they split the season, you know. Yeah, so yeah, motherfuckers. We only got four <laughs> episodes at a time. Yeah. It's like, oh, we had to wait two years and then we get it for they a gave month. Us four episodes, yeah. And then they made us wait four or five more months, and then they're like, okay, here's the rest. And you're like, yeah, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, yeah, and then we joked, I mean, we talked about how they joked about it last last week um, with the, like... <laughs> Animation styles. And... Yeah, that was pretty funny. But <laughs> So it's kind of like, fuck you, fans. This is why... <laughs> yeah. This is why it's taking so long. It's not our fault. Because... Uh, but you were even saying last week, and now I also want to go back and rewatch all of season one and then compare it to season two to see how many of those like animation tricks are used in, both in yeah. season one and in season yeah. two. Like, yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, season finale was strong. Uh, we know uh, the cliffhanger the episode before was Angstrom Levy. Right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So did I say his last name right? Uh, what was it? Is it Levy or Levy? Angstrom Levy uh, has Mark's mom and younger brother hostage. Uh, and that's where it left off. So this episode picks right up right there. Um, there was... It started with something else. I'm trying to... Like... It's like a not, not super important scene. Um and then it shows like a different dude like out for a jog and i was like oh my god are they going to play out an entire episode and not give us this final showdown and let that be the fucking it that's not the case no for anyone that's wondering it's not but at for cuz we joked about it even <clears throat> both on camera and off camera last week <clears throat> of what if they like make a filler episode just completely divert everything to something else exactly and, and then like, give us no. like the cliffhanger being that yeah because yeah. it opens with i think it's omni man like fighting in in the prison as a way of like that is make sure is, he's yeah. back up to strength and whatever yeah. and i was like no yeah but mm, yeah they don't they don't do that we get like all the almost the full episode is Mark <clears throat> and uh, Angstrom fighting each other, kind of fighting each other. Really, they don't fight until the end. 
Um, but really, it's just Mark trying to fight him and then getting yeeted into different universes. Which was very fun. Yeah. Um, Let's break down some of the, the multiverses. The, yeah. I mean, the first one that he gets sent to, was it the first one or was it the second one? It was the first one because that's how it is in the comics. Is yeah, you're talking about the Keaton one, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the first one. Not not Michael Keaton as Batman, <laughs> um, but we'll get to that one in a second. We'll get yeah, we'll yeah. get to that. He <clears throat> is a Batman. <laughs> yeah, he's thrown into a Spider-Man esque. In the comics, it's actually Spider-Man. They talk about the Avengers, Tony Stark, all that stuff. You know that this is just Sony being a bitch about it. Yeah, because why would Marvel not let them use it when Marvel let them use it in the comics, you know? Yeah. It's 100% Sony being like, hmm, no, you can't have Spider-Man animation. That's like our thing. For fucking 15 seconds, like, quit being a bitch. Yeah. Quit being a bitch. Yeah. Why are you being a bitch? Don't be a bitch. Don't. That's what the fans want. Why would you? That's more hype for Spider-Man. Don't that's helping both sides Don't out. Like, why would you? Ugh, yeah. Whatever. <clears throat> but so we get Agent Spider, but it is voiced by Josh Keaton, who voiced Spider-Man um, in a, a handful of animated projects. It uh, <laughs> gives up the vibe of Spider-Monkey in No Way Home. No. Yeah. No. Far From Home. Sorry. Oh, Spi- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Agent yeah. Spider. And yeah. It's like, is that Spider-Man? No, that's Spider-Monkey. He's the British version yeah. of Spider-Man. I read yeah, about it him was... online. Yeah. We got, was... we got the, the Kirkland brand Spider-Man. Yeah. Ugh. It was... Whatever. I'm glad that Josh Keaton voiced it, but I bummed that they didn't actually give us Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. But 100%. And, you know, still funny. Like, Invincible being like, are you sure you're not the bad guy? You've got glowing red eyes. That's menacing. And he's like, no, see? And then Professor Octopus, not Doctor, uh, he probably has a doctorate. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You know, attacks, it's it is still funny. You still get the sarcasm and wit yeah. of Josh Keaton uh, voicing Spider-Man. They just couldn't. We also say. get a we also get a Batman esque reference. It is a bat. They can't actually say Batman, uh, but you see Batman's cape again. Kind of like it had to have been like negotiations yeah. or not wanting to pay for right. the licensing, yeah. or uh, let's be honest, James Gunn being like, nah, fam. Um, well, again, why? Why? Share the w- share it for the fans. We're yeah. the ones that are fucking the comics, bankrolling you motherfuckers. You know what I mean? In the comics, like, it, it, yeah. another scene directly pulled from the comics with Invincible, but you actually see, you know, like the, the claws on Batman's yeah. hands, and it's a longer conversation, yeah. but he's like, so you're yeah. a man that dresses like You just like see his cape kind of flapping in the wind and then invincible is like but so you're you dress up like a bat and you're a man it just seems kind of lazy the name (laughs) you know (laughs) and that's the the scene we get yeah it but pulled directly from the the comic still just with less batman being shown you do the next one there's a Uh, couple more but Whatever one you want, I don't care. Uh, th- there's a Mad Max one. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, I forgot about that one. So there's three more. Yeah, at, that I can think of. Three more. I I can only think of one other one, but you watched more of the show than I did. Um, oh. The go for it. Other Robert Kirkman one of the Walking go for it. Dead yeah. Universe. Take it. Um, he gets thrown into a zombie apocalypse. Um. <laughs> it's just it's a cool nod because it's Robert Kirkman still who say the name of the show did The Walking Dead well, there you go and, but the original graphic novels that the show is based on <clears throat> Um, but it was just fun and everyone 
it was 100% clickbait online of everyone being like, oh my god, Rick Grimes shows up in Invincible. No, he doesn't. It, it's just, there's just walkers. Because you can't call them zombies because they never do. You really don't know the other one. I might be forgetting it. This is this is fun for me because I'm not a gamer. You're a gamer. Oh, the Fortnite one. Fortnite, yeah. When uh, when Mark comes out of one of the portals, he has a Fortnite gun and he hits Angstrom with it. And yeah, the the dragon dragon scale sniper rifle. Yeah, I but, was like, dude, you're a gamer. How do you not know? This? I have a. <laughs> strong dislike of Fortnite because I'm so bad at it. I've never fucking played it because it my, looks retarded to me. My cousin... No offense to any of our, you know, listeners that play it. I, I've watched my some of my best friend's kids play it, and I... It's not for me. I love video games, but that's not one I... I I've it played it a couple of times. What was wild was the first time that I played, I won... Like, it was, you know, a solo, every man for himself, you know, complete battle royale, <clears throat> and I won. And I was like, sweet. It's probably because I have a good understanding of games, but I don't probably have Probably because you were high... playing a bunch of little kids. Well, that too. Um, but there's <laughs> so many people that could just kick my ass in that game. But it was the, the very first time that I played. So, like, I had no ranking, but, like, I'm decent at video games. And then my cousin's like, oh, sweet. So you, you've you played. Cool. Um, let's let's play. I don't understand the point. I don't... I can't move fast enough to swap between the whole, like, building and fighting uh, yeah. thing. It, it's wild. I don't get it. But what's crazy is in Fortnite, because they brought in, like, Omni Man, Adam Eve, Invincible all that as additional skins for like, you know, a, a season of their online play. But the reason that Invincible is there, it's like a, a cutscene when you get the skin. And it is because Angstrom Levy throws him into that dimension. Like they take that from it. So then they played into it. So now that's canon, I guess. Yeah. Which that's is why... Mark is there, and he doesn't know how long he was there because yeah. Angstrom threw him there. Yeah. And Angstrom even says, he's like, I don't know how time passes in these different universes. Um, <laughs> and then the next time the portal opens, he comes flying out of the portal holding the Fortnite sniper rifle. The It just fucking pistol whips him with it. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hilarious. Only not a pistol, but yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The the writing was super good on this. Um, there was, I mean, there. this is something that I had talked to you about off camera that I wanted to bring up about the black eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So in the, there, there's some similarities between Mark, his mom and Omni man, uh, even in the promo art for the upcoming this season, when it was coming out was like Mark in his invincible costume, like standing, you know, well, fists balled up, and there's a puddle in front of him, and it was Omni Man as his like shadow, basically his reflection coming back at him. Uh, and this whole season has been like Mark trying to separate himself from his dad and the Viltrumites and shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also a very there's a similar part with uh, Mark's mom in the beginning of the season where she's just kind of like doesn't know what to do with herself and she's just kind of like blindly walking through the city uh and it's paralleled with uh omni man flying through space with nowhere to go and just kind of blindly flying until he finds the what are they called the uh, thraxons yeah yeah um and that gives him some purpose and uh I it was very cool. I read this. I this isn't my own observation, unfortunately, but that the <clears throat> I wish I knew the TikToker's name so I could credit him in this. But um, Mark, his dad, and his mom all have black eyes, and they're all on the left side. 
um, this isn't a thing in the comics because where we are in the comics, uh, they show these same scenes where, uh, you know, his Omni Man and Alan meet at the end of the episode, and Omni Man doesn't have a black guy. But in this, in the show, they all have black eyes, and the writers deliberately did this to show that Mark, his mom, and Omni Man are all still connected in some way it was very deliberately done i didn't notice the i didn't notice omni man's black eye yeah but i did notice just watching the episode with mark and his mom both having you know the the same eye being like bruised and swollen shut um and that's it's cool because it you know it's changing the source material a little bit while still like foreshadowing that that connection because we don't get to read you know the the background narration you know that's going on um <clears throat> the the showrunners are definitely paying attention and they're they're making changes where it makes sense Obviously, you don't want it to be a, a, a shot for shot. Also, can I say that uh, Steven Yeun, uh, voice as a voice actor, nailing it. Yeah. The emotion that that dude can put through into a cartoon right. just with his voice is fucking crazy. Crazy. Don't get me wrong. I love Steven Yeun. I've watched, I watched The Walking Dead. I watched uh, Beef. You know, like I, I love Steven Yeun. I think he's great. Uh, and watching him in Invincible has been great too. But I just wanted to point out that the amount of emotion just through voice acting, like people are like, "Oh, you just talk on a," you know, that's not how it is. Like selling that emotion, we just is, talk on camera, <laughs> like into a no, microphone. not camera. Sorry, yeah, yeah it's uh, into a microphone. But like showing, fucking selling that emotion for a cartoon. Uh, just through your voice is insane and fucking mm, Stephen Yun. Yeah, it. This doesn't have anything to do with uh, Stephen Yun, but uh, that's something that I I love to watch, like behind the scenes, especially for like video games and stuff like that. Especially because I'm a huge fan of Critical Role, um, but like uh, Laura Bailey. Uh, Ash, oh my, Ashley Johnson, you know, from The Walking Dead and yeah. watching like behind the scene or not The Walking Dead, sorry, The Last of Us. I was like, Us. she um, wasn't on The Walking Dead. The uh, Last from of Us. The Last of Us, watching behind the scenes of them like voicing uh, mm-hmm. their, In the their video characters games, yeah. for the video game. And just like when it's supposed to be like a super emotional thing and watching, you know, or hearing the recording engineer being like, and cut. And then they like are wiping tears because they like get themselves so into that moment. I think that it's it's not as appreciated as it needs to be. I think that I, I agree with you. Yes, one hundred fucking one hundred percent, one hundred with another one hundred percent on top of it. That's a because lot. I think the difference is is that uh, I think I think because I'm not an actor or a voice actor, but working a scene with somebody. And you're in that element, you're on set, and you're working that scene together. I feel like that, I again, I don't know. I feel like that would be easier than just being in a room by yourself with a microphone in front of you and having somebody be like, okay, here's your lines. I need you to get emotional. And like to be able to like turn that on for yourself and like get in like an emotional headspace with nothing around you influencing you in any way, that's really talented. And even at the... Yes, 100%. 100, 100%, uh, to use your (laughs) words. Um, And, like, that alone is incredible. And at the the best-case scenario is being able to, you know, watch the animation. But you still have to, like know that character you still have to know what they would like you it's like 
almost being a, a method actor without having to like live as that character. You know, you walk into the booth, they might show it to you a couple of times or read you the, the script a couple of times. And then it's just boom. And you have to like dive into that. Like you're yeah. not living as that character. You're just providing your, like that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to sit here with no acting credits listening to somebody else with no acting that that was a joke because we talked about <laughs> yeah. that off camera but, uh, <laughs> and had we recorded had we recorded that earlier that would be funny now our listeners are like these guys are fucking off the hinge off <laughs> the hinge uh but yes we are <laughs> <laughs> It's an inside joke that nobody else will get because we're dumb. Yeah. Uh, I, but yeah, but man, I, I, I really I applaud voice actors and and uh, Stephen Yun, who I don't believe has done any voice acting prior to Invincible, and I could be very wrong about that. Uh, I'll find out nails it, and yeah, I yeah, he gives me there's so much like energy in his fucking voice performance that it just blows my mind yeah i mean he he's done a few things here and there but voice acting yeah uh uh tuca and birdie i don't know what that is um i don't know what that is either but invincible it seems like is definitely the the biggest one um doesn't matter. Um, just being able to... I was just curious, and then I was like, there's a lot of credits. No, I, I just, I'm not going to dive into it. Fucking... I just, like, set. Oh, I completely like... missed it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you want to try it again? Because if I didn't notice <laughs> it, maybe other people won't, wouldn't have. Ready, set, oh, go. <laughs> it's, way funnier, it's way funnier that you didn't get it, but it's okay. <laughs> Speaking of our, because I was like, I was like, there's so much energy in his ah. voice performance, and I thought you were gonna take it from there, and you didn't. And I was like, ah, oh, goddamn. I was, Chad. I distracted myself. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But speaking of energy, <laughs> uh, first off, go watch Invincible if you haven't. You're seriously missing out. But if you like the energy, uh, you should check out Ray's <laughs> energy drinks. <laughs> Oh, I'm so mad at myself. Uh, <laughs> gonna have to call my mom and tell her that I'm disappointed in myself. It's gonna be a first time conversation uh, <laughs> that we've ever had. Um, but raise energy. It's a you know, it's an energy drink with zero calories, zero sugar, zero crash. Lots of great flavors. If you don't like energy drinks, that's totally fine. They have other stuff to choose from. Like protein packed desserts, uh, supplements, and a handful of plant based options, which we love over here uh, when companies offer that. So, listen up, learn how to save 15%. We'll be right back with you uh, for some trivial nerd suit. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful, yet sustained, energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their Refresh Formula technology, Ray's Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code nerd podcast at checkout for 15 percent off your order or if you don't know what you want go ahead and click the link that's in the description 
for, to get a $50 sample pack for free. All you do is you cover the cost of shipping. Again, make sure you use promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout to let them know that we sent you. All right, friends, it is time for Trivial Nerd Suit. Uh, this week's question is for Chad, and it is provided by Marty over at digicattech.com. Uh, if you would like to submit a question and try to stump one of us, please reach out to us on Instagram over at All Things Nerd Pod and send Chad a message for a question to stump me and vice versa if you're trying to stump him. Uh, but that being said, are you all oh, fuck? Yeah. Are you ready for the question? <laughs> mm hmm. I hope so because I'm reading it whether you are or not. No, wait, 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 wait. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, here we go. What is the title of the science fiction film where a divorced longshoreman and his estranged children face an invasion of extraterrestrial war machines leading to a desperate struggle for survival as these machines attack major cities around the world? Fuck. Really? Okay. I um... So science fiction long. Um, Want me to read it again? <clears throat> yeah, I think I have my my first guess, but give me your first guess, and I'll, and uh, then I'll read it again. Is it War of the Worlds? Nailed it. Okay. Yes. I I was trying I, to remember. I literally oh. left the. So Marty he the, he added another part in there, and I was like, no, the, <laughs> and that, I didn't read it. But the end of that question conf- was. That's why I was acting confused because you're like. There, there's a line in this that gives it away, and I was like, okay. I, I mean, the whole thing, I mean, yeah, that was an easy one. I'm really <laughs> mad about that. Not actually mad, but fuck you. Uh, <laughs> but the You're end of the question was... I thought the how end... easy the last one was to me that you still got wrong. Yeah. It says, <laughs> with the invaders ultimately succumbing to Earth's microbes. And I was like, I'm not reading that part. <laughs> it's yeah. like that's gonna give it away and but the uh, literally war and worlds is in the question and i'm like it's fucking the answer is in the question no <laughs> <laughs> Look, how do i reword this <laughs> okay so i i uh when you told me you're like it's it's like right there in the question yeah. and i was so I was like listening for it, right? Uh, and then you're like longshoreman also, and I was like, I think this is War of the Worlds, but I don't remember what he did. I just remember he had a Mustang and worked on a dock. Yeah, no, he was stacking uh, containers. Yeah, he was yeah. He, like the the crane operator. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that that's what a longshoreman was. Um, I didn't either. <laughs> I thought he was a crane <laughs> operator. Uh, <laughs> I could pretend that that I knew that, but I didn't. God, that was a good movie. That was a great movie. One of uh I want to go back. I uh, want to watch the the BBC uh TV show that they They <clears throat> only put out one season. Is there another season out? I watched the first season and I loved it. Does it not end with No, I'm a ridiculous person. Could say uh... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ridiculous person. What's up? I I was thinking of uh, the Mist. They made a the Mist TV show, mm. and I only saw the first season of it, and I didn't think that they put out another season. So when you said that, I was like, "There's a TV show. I think I've seen it. Was there only one season?" But I was not even on the same TV show. I'm dumb. <laughs> I'm a dumb dumb person. <laughs> That's totally. That's a bummer. I there's a War of the Worlds TV show. Yeah, I don't know how far it went. Um, Do you have it pulled up? I'm I'm in the process of pulling it up. Oh, okay. So it aired in 2019. Okay. Um, how many seasons? I'm I'm getting there. There's 24 episodes. <laughs> uh, 24. So that's one or two seasons maybe uh 
three seasons. Three seasons? War of the Worlds, huh? Yeah, eight episodes each. Um, I could have sworn that it was a BBC thing. Um, it was originally aired on Epics. Okay. What do you? Why are you wagging your finger about me saying BBC? It's because your mind is dirty. BBC is the British Broadcast Channel. Go fuck yourself. I know yourself. what it is. <laughs> you pervert. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you definitely weren't thinking about big black cocks. <laughs> Whoa, I wouldn't have said that. That's racist, bro. Uh, <laughs> it's another uh, acronym for that. <laughs> Don't put me in a corner. <laughs> Nobody puts Chad in the corner. Um, Swayze would be so mad at you so, right now. He would dance. Uh, there's three seasons of that show. Yeah, I guess each season is Epics. eight episodes. Um, uh, if you times eight by three, it's 24. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It would, no, I'm I'm laughing at myself because I was like, it's got to be either one season because like if you watch like Supernatural or Smallville, like a like a you know, you know they're like twenty, 20 episodes. something episodes yeah. per season. But if you break it up into two, you have fifteen six, sixteen episodes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, that wouldn't work. Two. So yeah, three is obviously the logical choice. Uh, one of the the so I was I was poking fun at myself, not that at you. Is Daisy Edgar Jones, who is also in Under the Banner of Heaven. Oh yeah, mm. she she was Brenda. Uh, she was like she's the, also in Fresh with um yeah uh what's his face the Sebastian? Winter Soldier guy Sebastian Sand. Sebastian yeah uh where the crawdads fucking lay or some shit like that. She's in that one too. She's in the upcoming Twister movie. Krada sing. Yeah, whatever. They do yeah. whatever. And Twisters. Uh, yeah, the upcoming yeah. one. Yeah. Awesome. Good for her. I'm going to check that out. Uh, I wonder where you can stream it now. Cause, uh, Which one? The crowd ads? No. <laughs> War of the Worlds. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know that, like, so in, uh, I, I guess I, I've, I've seen two War of the Worlds. I saw the original with... Uh, um uh howl uh fuck what's his name he was pony boy in the outsiders that's wild because he was tom the cruise origi- was also in the outsiders yeah and so tom cruise was the the predecessor after that um is it it's like cj c uh c something howl what is it? Your fingers are faster than mine. On the keyboard. On the keyboard. Don't be weird about it. You're the one making it weird. <laughs> uh, I am making it weird. Let's go the Outsiders. C. <clears throat> Thomas Howell. C. T- That's got to be it. C. Thomas Howell, yeah. yeah. Pony boy. Yeah. Uh, fuck. I beat the computer. Yay, people. Um <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I remember that that one, and then I saw the the Tom Cruise one, which is great too. And they literally just like the aliens just like fry people, or fry the Earth, and then consume their essence after they spray it all over the planet, which is what I like to do with uh, Crybaby Craig's hot sauce. I like to. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I like to spray it on everything. And then consume it. Um, and that is our sponsor number True. two spot. You have uh, a little spray bottle for it. That would be amazing. Oh, my God. I got to reach out to Craig. Um, <laughs> you can borrow it, bud, but I want royalties. Uh, Good afternoon, Sharks. I'm here to talk about this great <laughs> attachment for any hot sauce. Sorry. Uh, sponsor number two is Crybaby Cake Hot Sauce. It's a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes on practically anything. Listen up, we'll tell you more about it. Hey, you nerds. Do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. 
Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. All right, yeah. nerds. Uh, there's been a, a quite a bit of nerd news that we want to talk about. And we want to dive into a, a handful of these topics. First off, uh, Julia... Julia, uh, Julia Garner has been cast as the Silver Surfer for the Fat Fantastic Four film. Before anyone gets into a hissy fit, you know they they want to speak to managers, whatever. Um, she's not playing a female version of Norman. She's playing the actual version of the Silver Surfer. Who is female? Uh, Shala Ball. I don't yeah. know if I'm saying that right, but that's how when you read it, because we've never <laughs> had a, a we've never had a, a live action female Silver Surfer. No. So I, Shala, Shala if you Ball. Don't know Shala who Ball. Julia Garner is. She plays. Oh fuck! I forget her name. She's in Ozarks, the little feisty blonde from Ozarks. That's her. Uh. And a lot of people are losing their shit about this. I personally, Chad and I have talked about this off screen, and we think you're being kind of a bitch about it. Um, <laughs> there, she there plays is Ruth. Ruth one, Langmore. One, she's a fantastic Ruth. Yes, yeah, that's her name in Ozarks. Uh, she's a fantastic actress. If you if you haven't seen Ozarks, then your opinion is none because or inventing Anna. Or yeah, she's fantastic in in everything she's been in so far, thus far. Um, so I think she's gonna kill it. Uh, we also this doesn't mean, and this is just fucking stroking your little egos. Um, that doesn't mean that there is no Norin coming okay we yeah. know that everything right now is very multiversal uh with deadpool wolverine with the loki series with the uh the avengers um secret, secret wars. wars like it's everything's very multiversal so i mean the fantastic fucking... four film sorry to to cut you off no you're fine. supposed to you're take fine. place yeah i i forgot yeah uh, is supposed to take place in like the 1960s of a different universe which is how is that going to merge into present time maybe like a captain america situation because the fantastic four are coming to present time they're just this movie isn't going to be in present time they even hinted at it in uh dr strange 2 uh when he meets the illuminati and he's like He's like, or when uh, Krasinski's character comes on screen and he goes, Richards, didn't you guys chart in the 60s? Meaning that they launched into space in the 60s. So this this movie will take place <laughs> in the 60s, but then become relevant to real time. I mean, in Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, there was a, a music group called the Fantastic Four that did hit the charts in the 60s. So like it's He didn't say you hit the charts. He said didn't you guys chart in Yeah, the 60s? so it could be like a a double meaning leading into this, but there was a Fantastic 4 that charted in the 60s. No, cuz they also made reference in uh WandaVision too about the Fantastic 4. We talked about it on yeah. this podcast. That was like a year and a half ago or However the fuck long ago that was. That Longer, was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. But they, they made a reference to the Fantastic Four as early as WandaVision, which was the first MCU uh, TV sh Disney Plus TV show to hit. And they made a Fantastic Four reference all the way back then 
And now they're leaning heavier and heavier into it as we go forward. And now, obviously, we have the cast and blah, 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 blah. Um, but, yeah, so I don't think it was, like, a, a play on words in Multiverse of Madness. It was I definitely... Think it, I think it was both. Because in the first Doctor Strange, you know, he, like, his music knowledge, you know, in the in that first, like, surgery scene... <clears throat> I think it allowed for, for like a both and situation. Maybe like before they had anything, they were like, "Hey, let's make a reference," but we don't know where we're going yet. And yeah. now that they have a direction, they're like, "Yeah, that's what we meant." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like a, a yes and at an improv class, you know, you yeah. just keep going. Um, but anyways, yeah, female Silver Surfer, I'm here for it. Uh, now we just have to figure out is it going to be a totally CGI character? Is it going to be uh, not? You don't uh, like how do you capture, you know? Yeah. I, or like uh, Josh Brolin. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, motion as, capture rather as, than CGI. As Thanos but, where, you know, it's still the face, but then everything else. That's probably what it will be. Um, I assume so. Also because. Yeah. yeah. You pointed it out to me, you know, in the comics with the the female Silver Surfer, you know, she's taller, smart. Yep. Um, <laughs> she's very voluptuous, and I don't mean that. I'm not not body shaming anybody. I think Julia Garner is very attractive. I'm not, but she's like like five two yeah, maybe. She, yeah, and she's very very uh, skinny Petite. and small. And that you don't have to accompany those tropes. You don't have to be like, oh, she's got big boobs and a big ass and blah, blah, blah. So you don't have to be like, oh, this girl is going to play her, but we're going to CGI her with all this stuff and just use her voice. I'm not saying that. I'm just curious if they're going to CGI the comic accurate version of Silver Surfer. Or if they're going to, like you said, motion capture and, and just let Julia Garner be herself, yeah. but silver. You know, yeah. that's all I'm saying. Nobody gives a shit over here on our podcast what that looks like. We just want good content. That's all we care about. So, yeah. And with her, her acting chops, it's going to be good. Probably going to be very good. Yeah. Especially with so. the writing team, the rest of the cast. There's there's high hopes over yeah. here. Uh, Brandon uh, Urie would be singing if uh, he was invited <laughs> about these high hopes. Um, also, the as one door closes, another one opens. That's what God says, right? Uh, one of them. Invin- Invincible is done, unfortunately. But taking that Thursday spot in our weeks and our hearts is the Fallout series. Uh, un- unfortunately and fortunately, I believe they are just episode. They're dumping all the episodes. So it's not a weekly thing. You should be able to just consume it all when it drops on which, Thursday, which, which is I the will. day after this podcast drops. Yeah. I will uh, definitely consume all those episodes. Just nom, 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 nom. And we um, will be nom nom nomming those episodes on this podcast. What a weird way to phrase that, bud. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> yeah, but you said it. <laughs> we um, based on the the season and how the show goes, we might split it up because uh, yeah. we don't know the length of the episodes. We don't know how how much information, how much action, how much story yeah. happens per episode. We also have a ton of content to cover this month, and it's really hard to find. Like there was a there was a movie, Monkey Man, released uh, this week, and we were not able to see it. We want to see it. We will see it, and we will talk about yeah. it. But there's so much shit going on right now in the month of April that we're like, oh fuck, yeah. How are we gonna make this work? We both work full time jobs. We have lives. I have a kid. Like it's tough. I'm also moving. We bought a house. Yay. <laughs> Sorry. Not, I'm not in, I, I'll leave that there, but that's yeah, why brag. we haven't been able to. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. That's why we haven't been able to uh, 
do as much as we would very much like to. So, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, the episode dumping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of the episodes uh, on Thursday, as far as I am aware. And that's really cool. So, yeah. And to, to take a little bit of a, a step back, because <clears throat> Invincible did just end, but we know that there's they're working on season three. It's pretty much done. Uh, the and, voicing is done. The voicing I think is still done. Working on the animating, but yeah, <clears throat> animating, matching words to mouths, things like that. Um, one thing that it was quiet. It was. It just happened. They didn't want to bring controversy to it. Um, but good on <laughs> Amazon and the showrunners for doing this. Uh, Ezra Miller was replaced um, in Invincible. I mean, he was very, uh, sorry, they very much were uh, a side character. They they voiced um, Dr. Sinclair. Mm -hmm. Was it Dr. Sinclair um, in the show, the, the robotics person, uh, maniac, whatever. Uh, Ezra Miller was recast and revoiced by, oh, I didn't even pull it up by <clears throat> but from someone else and then it seems like uh dr sinclair in the show might have a few more spots but it'll be a new voice actor going forward mm -hmm. which good good on amazon for yeah. doing that and recognizing uh the problem that ezra miller uh, created is, as themselves. Is the problem yeah. that Ezra Miller is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else did um, we get this week? We got the our first... So we t I know we talked about this last week or the week before that they are... Uh, it was in our nerd news that they are making a uh, Frankenstein... Uh, Bride of Frankenstein movie with Christian Bale. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know who the female lead is as the bride. I know that is a Maggie Gyllenhaal or Gyllenhaal, as uh, <laughs> Jake told us that we have to say it. Um, uh, she is the director. Christian Bale is. We didn't know at the time when we mentioned this a couple weeks ago who he was playing. Because uh, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uh, Moon Knight. Fuck. Uh, help Oscar me out, Isaac. Buddy. Oscar Isaac is also in this. And we were like, is Christian Bale Frankenstein, uh, Frankenstein's monster? Or is it Oscar? We did get our first look at this. And it is Christian Bale as Frankenstein's monster. Um, there is a slight annoyance for me uh, with the appearance of this. Looks great. Love Christian Bale. Uh, but he's got a bunch of tattoos. And it's like, oh, are we doing the? Are we doing a Jared Leto, Joker, Frankenstein? Like, come on, <laughs> just let it be Frankenstein's monster. Why, why with the tattoos? They they're doing this with the crow, the the new adaption of the crow. He's like all tatted up, has face tattoos and like a whatever that. It's like a mullet, but it's also kind of like a bohawk, you know, haircut, yeah. like. Whatever, do what you want with your, you know, but don't do this. Why? <laughs> Why are you guys doing this? Like, I know don't... it's modern times, but we want the originality of these yeah. characters. We don't 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 do it want for the to make them. Don't do it for the sake of doing it, especially yeah. With the the remake of the Crow, I get because it's based in modern times, but uh, the movie is just called The Bride. Um, yeah, <clears throat> but it's still it says in the the description that it's based in the 1930s. Oh, chest How? tattoos in the 1930s. Yeah, that exactly. Like, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, is it based? So, so this is where I'm because uh, I think I wonder if like there's like a time gap. Where it's like, maybe, because uh, like, 
maybe it's based in the 1930s where like uh Frankenstein it, Frankenstein's monster is um lonely and whatever and maybe it's like his search for love and then finds through generations some the bride of Franken you know what i mean uh yeah. which also that title is weird because if the if Frankenstein Dr. Frankenstein was the creator then the bride of Frankenstein doesn't make sense because then she would be the bride of the doctor and not the monster am i wrong no, if you're taking it literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I wonder if there's like a gap in time. Cause that would explain the tattoos, but it also, why with the tattoos? Sorry, Maggie, I think you're brilliant, but why? Yeah. I mean, I still have high hopes for it. The cast is... Oh, I am all in, 110%. I'm here for it. The mo- I, I I love I mean if you if any of our listeners have seen my basement out there, it is Dracula, Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster, the Invisible Man, courtesy of Chad Hilson, uh, uh, Godzilla, King Kong. I Dracula, love my monster yeah. movies, and I've watched all of the originals, like the black and whites. Like I love them, love them, love them. That's why I'm being a little harsh about it, but yeah. I am very hopeful that this is going to be fantastic. I'm still very stoked. I'm sure it'll be great. Just from the cast alone mm. and Maggie Gyllenhaal, <clears throat> you know, directing. Oh, you said it wrong. Maggie Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Sorry, was that better? Uh, <laughs> much, much. Uh, it... <clears throat> I'm I'm very very hopeful. I'm not worried. Just when that's the only image that we have so far, it's hard not to. It's super like angsty teen too, because yeah, he's got like his... a overcoat on with it like <laughs> open and his tattoo showing, and he's like holding his hair backwards. It's very like '90s Christian Slater. Like I was gonna say, it <laughs> was like my senior photos um because you took senior photos yeah uh i i twat (laughs) thank you (laughs) Uh, definitely did and it was at the point in time before minnesota was like no one under the age of 18 can get tattooed uh so like i had a few tattoos and you know it was i was an emo kid of course i had moody photos fuck off uh (laughs) Moving on from that, uh, an, another dark and brooding thing that uh, we're very excited about is uh, Daredevil Born Again has wrapped filming. The first part, apparently it's broken into two parts, which is annoying, as we mentioned then earlier about like, Invincible. You're getting but 18 episodes. Part one, it is, yeah, separated. it is more episodes than normal, so yay, but... Uh, they are splitting it into two parts. Then just so say the you're getting season part... one is nine episodes. Yeah. So just first part is done filming. <clears throat> and I will leave you alone to talk about it because no. I steamrolled you a little you're bit. Sorry. Totally fine. But what's cool is that we have set photos of John Barenthal back as the Punisher. Bloody. Just. What, why are you counting? But why? What do you mean? Oh, I, there's <laughs> what do so you mean? many. There's all the people that have that are coming back. Yeah, not just John Bernthal. Yeah, and maybe uh, Flynn Jones. Flynn Flynn Jones. I don't know. Oh, the kid who plays yeah Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Is that not his name? He won't be back in Daredevil. He's uh, uh, but he gonna might make be his coming return back. in uh, uh. Sh- Shang Chi. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Flynn. Flynn Jones. What did I say? Floon? Not something else. Maybe. Floon. Maybe you said Flynn and I was like, that's not right. F- Floon. Floon Jones. Uh, <clears throat> wow. We're dumb. Yeah. Um, clearly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Karen Page, Foggy, all of them are. Bullseye. 
is back. Yeah. Um, Kingpin is the big bad. Oh. You know. Um. But we know that from from Echo. Yeah. Um. But it's, still, just Vincent D'Onofrio coming back. D'Onofrio. Yeah, I always. Forget. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They, uh, Jessica Jones. Kristen Ritter. Ritter as a. Uh, uh, Jessica Jones is supposed to. Luke Cage is also supposed to be coming back. Like they're bringing all the OGs. I don't know if Luke Cage is going to be in Daredevil. It would make the most sense to me, especially with the way that Defenders ended. Yeah. That they bring those characters back. Um, but yeah, I'm stoked. I'd be very okay with seeing Mike Coulter come back. Ooh, the question is, are we going to get Claire back? You know, Rosario, Rosario Dawson. I hope so. Her and I, I think we mentioned this when we like a couple of two or three weeks ago, but I think, uh, oh, and I forget her name. You have it pulled up. Uh, the the girl who plays uh, Finn, is it Finn? I think you said Flynn, and it's actually Finn Jones. Oh, you're probably right. But the girl who's his opposite, I forget her name off the top of my head. Who's his opposite? You mean that plays Colleen Jessica? Yeah, yes, Jess- Jessica yes. Jessica Henwick. Henwick. Yeah. Yes. So we had mentioned a couple two or three weeks ago that she turned down the role in Shang-Chi as uh, uh, his, sister. Uh, his sister because she was hopeful that she was going to return to the MCU yeah. as um, what was her name again? Colleen? Colleen. Yeah. Yeah. Colleen um, and that I, I, at the time I was like, Oh man, they're rewriting so much. I don't, that's a bummer. That's not going to happen. And now with the reviving of these Netflix uh, characters, like good on you. Like that's bet. Like <laughs> good yeah. for you. I'm happy she did that because that would cause a problem. Now, you know, like it had she taken that role and then mm-hmm. now they revived all this shit. What would they fucking do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which one gets recast? <laughs> exactly. Know? Yeah. So I am so happy, and I hope that they uh, the Iron Fist cast comes back because I know a lot of people were really upset about Iron Fist. I wasn't a huge fan of season two myself. Same. Uh, yeah. But season one was fire. The Defenders was fire. That kid kills it in that role. Same with uh, Jessica Chenwick. Chenwick. Jessica Henwick. Henwick. Fuck. Uh, I my brain isn't working today. If anybody, nobody knows this, but I'm very hungover. <laughs> I had a, I had a three thirty in the morning kind of night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, uh, Jessica Henwick. Yes, I want to see those characters back in these roles. I think they nailed it. I loved it. Season two was just a need little better writing. Which they cheesy, yeah, on the have. writing side, yeah. but the characters are great. The the actors and actresses that are playing those characters are nailing those roles, and I I want all of those people back. Yes, please, with better writing, which we'll have with the MCU. Yes, please. The the only thing that I would be very I almost just took my shit. <laughs> I literally just like just out of like no for no reason I was like I'm gonna drink that and I was like wait that's the closeout shot what am I doing it's not uh, you can drink it because <laughs> uh, we will pause before then um, <laughs> the in f- for me the only way that I would be more excited for recasting of like Luke Cage Iron Fist and stuff like that is if they're going to age them down to match like Spider-Man like Tom Holland <clears throat> just because I, I really think... enjoyed the spectacular Spider-Man animated series where they're all you know like the same age yeah other than that I just like I don't... love the actors that have played all of these roles I just yeah. want to see them have better writing behind them 
I just don't think you can do that because the age that they a lot of those characters got their powers because not all of those characters like had those powers were much older already like Jessica mm-hmm. Jones she was experimented on as a child you know what I mean like and then right. progressed into her you know so I don't know I mean, I like that idea. I just don't know if they'll be able to I just like that, execute that. Yeah. That iteration from the animated series. So if they were going to recast, be like, okay, let's yeah. all go like... If they were going to like reboot all of those characters. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's. Thank you for phrasing it better as I'm stumbling over my words. <laughs> it's a, I, I just, as, as of right now, I don't think that's going to happen, so... Yeah, we get that, which is great because I love those characters. I love the actors and actresses that are portraying those characters. They look great. They do great. Uh, I love Kristen Ritter as Jessica Jones. Oh, yeah. I was, and I think we talked about it years ago on this podcast. I was a little worried about it because she is. I mean, I love Kristen Ritter, and I not that she's ever going to hear this, but. You know, she's always been a supporting character, not like a lead. And this, so I was a little nervous uh, with her stepping into the Jessica Jones uh, role. Uh, But two things she did that made me feel really good. She got rid of those bangs that she is (laughs) famously known for. Uh, And she bulked up a little bit and she murders this role. So in a good way, she kills it. That's the word I should have used. She huh. kills it. It's so good. I love Kristen Ritter. I've always thought she was pretty attractive. Uh, and Jessica Jones, she is very attractive. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like, like please and thank you. More of this. Why like, with the bangs, oh, Kristen? Oh, a lot more. Why? Well, I think it, that was just like a, a <laughs> period of time of people being like, you're kind of like Zoe Deschanel, but not quite. So she's like, <laughs> no, I can do this. Yeah. Oh, and then no. she stopped doing that and it was better. I, I love her as uh, the Jessica Jones role as well. Yeah. Again, it's of, of the Netflix Marvel shows, they're season twos weren't that great you know except for Daredevil. jessica jones had season three seasons i didn't watch the third season i'm s- sorry and i didn't watch the second season of uh luke cage or well, you're gonna have to now because I, those I, characters are fucking relevant now i i will it just i didn't watch them right away and then i let the internet influence me uh way more than i'd like to admit um also, getting getting off yeah. that topic, um, yeah. there we should be. There's rumors that we're going to be getting another Deadpool and Wolverine trailer soon. Yeah, that's about all we know. That's I, it. <laughs> I, I'm ready for it. Sweet. We read it. We want it. Good night. Bye. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last thing is that uh, for nerd news is that. We re- oh no, you froze. Read that for the upcoming Spider Man 4 movie with Tom Holland is that. Did I? Am I still frozen? Uh, you're back Let now. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want to build a snowman? Uh, I'll start that over. Do your. Ah, just keep going. Because uh, okay. it, it came through afterwards, but just reiterate okay, cool. with Spider Man 4. So yeah. for Spider Man 4, we read that. Uh, with Tom Holland's character as Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man. He is going to, now that his aunt is dead, his uncle's dead, he has no parents. He lost, uh, as we saw at the end of uh, Spider-Man Nowhere Home, he lost his girlfriend and his best friend. Uh, All of the Avengers have forgotten, not all, but we'll see how that plays out. In in Uh, theory, all, but we'll, yeah. (laughs) All the Avengers have forgotten uh, his identity, which really sets up the, you know, the Stark tech doesn't recognize Peter Parker anymore. So he had to make his own suit instead of having the amped up suit that Tony made for him. Uh, So we're kind of getting 
now the beginning of Spider-Man. Uh, but with the beginning of Spider-Man, Tom Holland's Peter Parker is going to kind of fade away. He doesn't have anybody to connect with, and he's going to lean further into his Spider-Man persona rather than his Peter Parker persona. I think this is really cool. I'm really excited about this this concept of Spider-Man is his main identity. Mm-hmm. And we know that it, it works really well in modern day grounded street level um, superhero films because of Matt Reeves, the Batman mm-hmm. where Bruce Wayne was like the side character, you know, mm-hmm. like that, that's the, the <clears throat> mask quote unquote. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see how, how they do this. Cause there's also been, uh, you know, like not really leaks, but you know, r- reports that <clears throat> throughout Spider-Man four, he's really only going to have one ally and we know that through rumors that it's going to be daredevil. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Eddie Munson, we get it. Yeah. (laughs) But that, that's really cool. (laughs) Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. As you're wearing a stranger things esque shirt. Uh, I, I'm stoked on this. Um, yeah. Multiple, you you had multiple villains announced. Yeah. Multiple villains announced. Uh, Scorpion finally making his return yes. since uh, Spider-Man 1, uh, 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 Homecoming. Uh, he had a very small role and then had a cameo at the end of the movie. Uh, very menacing. And now... Did I freeze again? No. It looks like I froze. Okay. And now it looks like uh, he's coming back. Kingpin. Um and more. Uh, I, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> the, I forgot the, him off the top. The of vulture. We also. I also read that there is going to be a new love interest. Uh, that uh, Zendaya will have a. And this is all speculation. I don't know shit. You know. Um, but that Zendaya will have a cameo, uh, part in the movie rather than like an actual role in the movie. It, I think it's going to be part of Peter letting go of Peter Parker and. Mm-hmm. Whipping on to uh, <laughs> Spider Spider Man's persona rather than, and so I wonder. For me, I wonder if that character is going to be uh, Black Cat. That would be really cool because we also there's rumors that uh, Donald Glover uh, will be back, uh, mm-hmm. but actually as the Prowler, That'd which be is cool because we got a glimpse of him kind of in his Prowler like armor. Uh, in, into the not into uh, yeah, across uh, the spider verse yeah. across fuck <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> which I mean I, I'm here for it it just sounds hot I love Don Glover so yeah yeah give me that it's Mike Donald and I want it now <laughs> Call Jay. Call Kevin. Hey, Peters. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we went the same way and did different things. <laughs> no, it, it's it's gonna be. I mean, none of them have let me down so yeah. far for the it, for the Spider-Man films. It really, mm-hmm. I think what they're going for is we got Tobey Maguire. I think nailed it the most. Uh, with, sorry, Andrew, I love you. You're, um, (laughs) but, uh, I think the Toby's character nailed it the most with, um, him being cut off from everyone living in that tiny apartment. And you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. he'd barely make an ends meet, but still pushing on to be Spider-Man. And I think that that's where they're leaning with this. So they showed at the end of, uh, Spider-Man three that, uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man is, in a small apartment, he's getting his GED because he can't graduate high school now, because uh, yeah. nobody even knows who he is. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think they're leaning heavily into that aspect of Peter Parker's journey, and I think that's really cool because uh, we know if you've read the comics or watched the cartoons, Peter Parker is very depressed. He's sad. 
and he he doesn't like being Spider-Man, but he knows that don't fucking say it. I'm gonna with great power comes great responsibility. I was going he to ta- go Civil War and be like, <laughs> when you can do the things that he can do and you don't, and the bad things happen, that's on you. Yeah, yeah. So he he just kind of takes it on, even though he doesn't fucking want to. Um, and yeah. I think they're leaning more into that because in the beginning of it, he was very like, "Woo, this is awesome! I'm really here for it. I want to do this. Put me on the team, co- put me in, coach." You know, yeah. and uh, and now it's going to be on the back half of it. Like I lost everyone because of this. I lost my friends, my family, struggles my girlfriend. Rent, now I'm alone. Yeah, full. and Spider Man is the only thing I have left, and yeah. that is Spider Man. That's what Spider Man's supposed to be. Yeah. And it's sad, but a hundred percent. Yeah. That's what that's what we want. We want sad and <laughs> hot. We're anger. elder emos over here. We <laughs> want yeah. yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Talk about our, our next sponsor. Uh I don't wanna linger on this too much longer. You're in the wrong spot, buddy. We already did both our sponsors. You're right, we did. Okay, <laughs> sweet. Uh, I was like, did we get a third sponsor? Now, now I feel weird for keep saying that we want sad and hot Spider Man because I want because <laughs> I thought I was laying it off. I completely forgot that we moved our sponsor spot. Sweet. Um, you know, before we close ah, out this episode, so I'm going to go funny. jump in the bath with a toaster. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to do that, but <laughs> we're... Fuck yes. me, bud. So let's, yes. we're going to close out this episode. All uh, right, before we close out this episode, we are going to talk about our honorable mentions. Chad, Chadley, Chadison, Chad Hilson. What do you got? Ooh, that was a good progression there. Um... <laughs> I mean, I've been watching a bunch of Dimension 20 D&D live play, um, but also I've been watching more of the TV show Bodies on Netflix. It's uh, it's interesting. I'm intrigued. I'm not 100% sold on it, but my brain won't let me not finish it. So it's at least doing something right. Uh, <laughs> what about you? What do you have for honorable mentions? I... Unfortunately, do not have any uh, honorable mentions this week. We are uh, movie. Oh, I have one. I have one. I only watched one episode of it. It's called Sugar. That's Colin Farrell. Uh, it's his new like gritty crime series on um, Apple TV. Uh, <clears throat> other than that, we've our lives have been consumed by packing and getting ready for our move into our new house out in St. Cloud. So. Um, I, not a lot of TV watching has been going on over here. And when it is, it's like scrubs at bedtime, yeah. which don't get me wrong. I love scrubs, but it's just kind of background noise because yeah, the kid just, screams through the whole thing until he falls asleep. Rewatching so. stuff that you've seen four or five times anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Com- so not a TV. ton <laughs> going on there, but that's it. That's all I got. All right. Well, um, now is the point of the show where we start just rambling off shit that sounds like it could be... We start begging for money. Yeah, it's going to sound a lot like uh, copy and or the side effects of a new life-saving drug. Um, so if you really like the show and you want to support us, the best way to do that is to, like Jake said, give us your money. We'd really appreciate it. The best way to do that is to go to buymeacoffee.com slash allthingsnerd. It's a a monthly subscription, and uh, you get behind the scenes, you get bonus content, member exclusive merch. It's the honestly the best way to support the show. If you don't want to do that, we understand, lame. Um, but you can always go to www.allthingsnerd. Allthingsnerdpod.com. Sorry, um, and uh, check out our merch store. That's a gr- great way it's a you know one-time purchase you get something in return also a great way to support the show uh if you don't want to give us your money at all again lame but we totally understand uh just like share subscribe follow us on social medias 
all of them. Um, that's honestly super helpful. Anyways, I know we say lame. It's because it's funny. Um, but and like we are funny, damn it. <laughs> we are. There's t-shirts and stickers to prove it. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, also, uh, from our Trivial Nerd Suit uh, sponsor of Digicat Tech, if you're in the need of any sort of digital marketing, sales strategies, or just... Trying, website building just trying anything. to expand whatever yeah. you have going on check out digicattech.com reach out to marty he is he's a fucking wizard we love him over here <clears throat> if you like other nerdy stuff especially dungeons and dragons and are looking for a live play D podcast check out the kobolds in the basement podcast it's bi-weekly it's hosted by yours truly chad from the All Things Nerd podcast. Uh, in our most recent episode, Jake was a part of it. Uh, he was there. It was a good time. Uh, but most importantly, we just want to say thank you. We love you. Thank you for your support. We love you. Can we I love say, you. Can I say thank you again? Yeah, I'm going to say thank you again. Um, but in all seriousness, this has been the All Things Nerd podcast.